beyond Good Saturday evening, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Beyond 3D. Matt here, and sitting across from me is the ever-popular Clint Hamill. Clint, how are you this week? Uh, and, uh, can someone call Mulder and Scully? And Tell get, me about it. And get them onto this. Which universe are we actually in? Did the Mandela effect just hit us all while we were asleep, or what? Yes, yes indeed it did, folks. Earlier in the week, I think everybody knows by now... No, Do don't, no. <laughs> no. No, don't. Just don't. And can we only give this 10 minutes tonight? I don't want to give it any more. Any more than 10 tops. My wife and I, we decided that we were not going to throw any more energy at this at all. We are going to remain neutral. 10 minutes and we're done. Go. Okay. I'm timing as of now. Okay. Guys... First thing I want you to do is I put up a blog on my website, and I'm going to link that blog to our Facebook page, the Beyond 3D Facebook page, and I want you to all check that out. One of the things in the United States during this election that played a huge role was the racial divide or lack thereof. Now, most people, being that Barack Obama was the U.S. president, believed that in the United States, race relations had gotten a lot better. Can I say maybe also economic divide? In a sense, but we'll get to that as well. Go for it. Now, when you look at this past week and the election, I believe the world can figure out that that so-called racial divide is still alive and well in the United States. And based on the fact that this campaign was beyond the negative and the result that happened because of it, um, a lot of people, quite frankly, are still reeling and are in a state of shock and disbelief, which is why earlier this week we were seeing people, hundreds of thousands of people, marching through the streets of Los Angeles, marching through the streets of San Francisco, New York, Chicago, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, many of the major capital cities in the States. People are gutted, for lack of a better term, because Secretary Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, but lost the Electoral College. Um, I lost $500 on this. Mm-hmm. Now, as everybody knows, I, I openly, for many, many years, said that Hillary yeah. was going to take the chocolates. Yeah. Um, and technically, she did. She won the popular vote. She won the popular vote by 200,000 votes. Yes. But what a lot of people don't understand, the way the electoral... College works. The electoral college system works. Um, Everybody might have their vote, but at the end of the day, it's not the people vote that gets the president into office. Yeah. 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 What happens with the electoral college, it started in 1787, and what they did was the elitists or the landowners in the United States who knew they would have to have government and have a president, they did not want the sweaty masses actually choosing that president. So what they did was they said the vote would be a representation of how each state felt about it. The electors, as in the Electoral College, were chosen from the group of landowners to then go to Washington at the time and to represent those states and vote for president. Now, there's technically nothing stopping any of the electors from voting with their conscience and refusing to support the candidate whom they were bound or from abstaining from voting altogether, is there? They can do that, but that is only possible within 26 of the 50 United States. So that's that's called a faithless elector. Mm -hmm. Um, And the idea of electors, as you said, was reversing the vote is really discussed and... It was bandied about after the incredibly close 2000 election in which George Bush narrowly beat Al Gore. This is the exact same scenario. Yeah. Al Gore had the popular vote by over 500,000 votes, yeah. but George Bush won the Electoral College and became president. And when that happened, yeah. did America protest en masse like it is now? Quite frankly, no. No, they didn't, did they? Which tells me that but there was another reason there was another reason and the reason was they were fighting over florida and that fight to count the votes in florida took a heck of a lot longer than it would normally this wasn't a fight in that regard this was um this was a spiritual fight of sense it's weird really odd um look 
I, I have spent days pondering this. Yep. You kept me up to date with it mm-hmm. as it was happening because yep. I was totally. I had a social media blackout at the time. Yep. You were sending me texts through and telling yep. me that um, I can't even say his name. That he was winning at the time, and I was in total disbelief. Mm-hmm. Now, knowing full well what we knew prior leading up to this, yes, one or two things have happened here. Yep. Either the majority of people that Trump... Because he's really smart. Mm-hmm. He's really, really smart how he did this. He, from what I can tell, allegedly relied on appealing to the lowest common denominator. Yes. And that were that was the majority of who turned out to vote. Mm-hmm. Yes? Yes, in a sense. I, okay, guys, here's what I'll tell you to do. And Clint, you can do this as well. Go to... And I'm putting it up on the Facebook page. Or go to my blog. And the title of that blog is The Second American Revolution. And in that blog, I go over just that. And one of the headings is how to win an American presidential election using 12 words. It wasn't grab them on the... No, not at all. I mean, those are another... Basically, I'll, I'll tell you what it was. The words were very simple. It's 12 words. Make America great again. Build the wall. Drain the swamp. Crooked Hillary. Repeated over and over again using NLP. The man is a marketer. He's not stupid. I'm telling you, when you read this blog and you go over it and you start to see the way this thing was constructed, you will find that exactly you are right, Clint. He appealed to the lowest common denominator. Do you know what the percentage was of who turned out to vote and who didn't? Yes. Go on. You would think, and we'll start with this one, because what put him over the top was something you didn't think would. And this is what it was. White women. Yeah, 53%. What the hell? After grab them by the and all of this, 53%. So guys, in the United States of America, if two women are walking down the street, two white women are walking down the street, one of them, if you grab them by the based upon that vote, they don't mind. This is what was going on back then. It was amazing. Who said there's nothing to fear but fear itself? Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Who said... Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. JFK. Who said grab them on the... Yeah, Donald Trump. And that's what he's going to be remembered for. Literally. That's his quote. The President of the United States. How do you explain that to... You've got daughters, I've got daughters. How How do you explain that to them? You basically just say, look, it's an aberration. It's four years. And quite frankly, if... It goes on longer than four years. There is definitely something wrong with the fabric of the universe, in my opinion, at least. I've always said that Jeb Bush Mm -hmm. would come after Hillary and succeed after Hillary. But you know who I honestly believe, now I've had a bit of time to think about it, Mm -hmm. who could sweep in and steal it right out from under his feet? Michelle Obama. That is a distinct possibility. The other thing that could happen, and a lot of people are going to be... Look, we're going to be Monday morning quarterbacking this thing from now until the cows come home. The Democrats ran an absolutely pathetic campaign. That aside, if you're looking for people in 2020, you can look at Joe Biden, who was the vice president under Barack Obama. You can look at he and Elizabeth Warren to run president and vice president as well. There's a lot that can be done. But suffice it to say, and there's been a lot of angst and a lot of press over all of this. And um, one of the, another one of the quotes that came out of, um, oh, what's his name? You got two minutes. Thank you. Um, Let me see. His name is Eddie Claude Jr. And he's from Princeton University. And the way he described it, this was white America's last stand is the way he described it. This was a situation where they talked about the South and they talked about the Rust Belt. They talked about how people were feeling fear, how there were no jobs around. And basically what happened is you got a marketer that used NLP, came in with 12 words. Can you just explain to people what that means? Neural Linguistic Programming is NLP. And he used it masterfully. In a nutshell, what neurolinguistic programming states is that a person cannot truly understand an entire territory or map. They can only understand their reality or their space. 
So based upon that, you can use words, you can use imagery in such a way that can manipulate their space. And by manipulating the space around people, you can manipulate and affect and cause a certain type of change. When you look at the words that were used, make America great again, to a person who is in a place that is depressed, housing is depressed, jobs and, and there's tons of unemployment, there's nothing going on, crime is on the rise, and somebody says make America great again, that is a wealth formula within their reality map, so to speak. When you look at somebody that says build, build a wall, they are putting security and protection into their reality map. When they say drain the swamp, that is an action formula and a solution that gets into their reality map. And when you talk about crooked Hillary, what you are doing is from the outside giving them a cause for uh, all of their woes. Look. He has that many indictments against him and lawsuits. Uh, it won't be long. He'll have the bracelets on. Well, for now, that doesn't matter. What you're looking for in the United States, and I'm coming up, I know, and I'm running over time here. So you have December the 19th, which is when the Electoral College gets together and verifies the vote. And if they don't? If they, Quite if frankly, they, don't, if they, that, don't, back, if they don't back him, if they say no, we don't want him... You can have a situation where it can be thrown back to the Congress, or you can have a situation where electors decide to vote for Hillary Clinton, or anybody else they want for that matter. And then you would have a conundrum, and then you would really see a civil war in the streets of the United States. It's going to happen, Matt. I have no idea, it's, but it's this, highly unlikely. This story is not yet over. Oh, the story is not even close to being over, because even if he is sworn in as president, people are now galvanized. People are getting together. People are plotting. People are planning. They want to know that they do not have to deal, and I'll put it the way um, Eddie um, Jr. from Princeton University put it. Um, they want to make sure that they are not dealing with an ill-informed racist who is morally and ethically bankrupt for longer than four years. Hang on. Just check this out. You ready? Yeah. Get your fingers and start counting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm ready. Sexual assault allegations since 1970. Mm -hmm. The beauty pageant scandals since 1992. Mm -hmm. The racial housing discrimination from 1973 to 1975. Right. The mafia ties from the 70s on to today. Well, if you're into construction in New York, mm -hmm. you have no choice. Trump University. The that comes to court in about a week. Yes. Mm -hmm. The tenant intimidation that yes. he uh, put people through in New York City from mm -hmm. 82 to 86. Yep. The four bankruptcies he's yep. been through. So he had one in 91, one in 92, one in 2004, and one in 2009. Yep. Let's hope he doesn't bankrupt America. <laughs> the undocumented Polish workers incident mm -hmm. in regards to Trump Towers. That was mm -hmm. another one. Alleged marital rape, 1989. And then I do know with that one, she then withdrew that claim. Break, uh, there was him breaking the casino rules uh, yeah. back in the 90s. Yep. Uh, the antitrust violations from 1986. 11. Condo hotel shenanigans. 12. <laughs> Corey Lewandowski. Oh, my God. That guy? Yeah, uh, from uh, Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, suing the journalist, Tim O'Brien, for libel. Mm, no, he sounds... Oh, please, with lawsuits and libel with Trump, don't worry about it. If you haven't been sued by Trump and you're in the journalism industry in the United States of America, you're you're few and far between. Every, he's gone after everybody. That's Refusing no problem. to pay workers and contractors. Tons of them. Tons of them. Uh, what else? Trump Institute. Yeah, yeah. Trump Steaks. <laughs> Trump Clothing. Buying up his own books to make it uh, a bestseller. Yeah. Um, Buy him, put him in the Atlantic. Yep. Oh, look. The Trump Wait. Foundation. Yeah, they talk about the Clinton Foundation. The Cuban embargo. Own. Yeah, there's tons of that. Um, um, the fact that it just... That's it. I'm not... That's it. Right. I'm done. No, I'm, the done. Fact, I'm done. And the fact that after all of the denials, Russian diplomats have come out and said they were involved with Trump's campaign during the election during the time before that so that was another lovely little snippet so guys are you done yeah basically kind of sort of guys take a look i'll put the link up you can take a look at the blog um understand that a lot is going to be going on with this for a very long time because quite frankly this has well violence is broken out on the streets there is violence on the streets of the united states in many cities a lot of people are saying it's not my president this is not going to go away too soon anyway guys what i did on the facebook page as well was i put up a picture of the meeting that took place 
on Thursday in the United States between President Barack Obama and President-elect Donald Trump. Now, can I ask, in that photo, Yes. Um, Trump is sitting in the foreground, mm -hmm. and just over his shoulder is a bust. Yes. Is that Dr. Martin Luther King? It is a bust of Dr. Martin Luther King. That is a... <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit of an oxymoron of a photo, that isn't it? And, the, and my title underneath the picture is, MLK is watching, you can't hide. Now, you were discussing something about body language in that picture, weren't you? Yeah, um, a lot of people in England, a lot of... Um, oh, what would you call them? Behavioral specialists? That's a good way of saying it. Were studying the body language during the meeting between Barack Obama and Donald Trump. When you're a high school teacher, yeah. which I used to be, yeah. being a behavioral specialist is something you learn very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And the woman on the pic, when she looked at the two of them, she said, if you look, they're both alpha males, but Barack Obama's legs were spread out wider, his hands were up in a more positive position, showing that he was indeed in charge. Um, Donald Trump was still in that position, but his hands and the looks on his face and his brow and the way he was looking around, you could tell that he was definitely not used to this. There, they said there was a point during that meeting where there were so many photographers, there was about a hundred and something photographers in the room, and you can see that the amount of shutter clicks were absolutely unnerving at part of the time. But they said to look at Donald Trump's hands. So when you look at the picture, you will see his hands in between I, I his micro, legs. I'm gonna need a microscope for those. Mm -hmm. He has such tiny hands. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the hands are pointed down in a submissive position. And they were saying he has received some information that he didn't know before, and it is really making him think twice about what he is about to take on. The look on his face in that picture almost looks like he wished he didn't have this job anymore. Yeah, absolutely. It's like the look on his face is what. What, what have I gotten myself? What into? have I got myself into here? And so, take a look at that picture. I'm going to re put it. I'm going to repost it on the Facebook page just to make sure everybody can take a look at that. Because, quite frankly, um, it was very interesting. The other thing that the behavioral specialist stated was that even though Barack Obama tried to put forward a very brave face and say things that make the people feel that there will be a smooth transition of power. They stated that his body language and his temperament and the cadence in his voice, the tone and the inflection stated that even though he was saying that, he did not believe it. He has got up in front of the world many, many times mm -hmm. and in incidents that were horrific, he has been very calm and poised as the commander in chief. Mm -hmm. um, he hasn't been so poised this week. No. It's been difficult for everybody, I think. But, guys, take a look at this picture. Um, listen to what's going on. And for all of you out there, spiritual people and everything like that, energetically scan. You can feel it. It is palpable. The negative energy emanating from the Republican Party. The negative energy emanating from that campaign. And then once you've felt it, brush it off of you. Take a green light, think of green light around your hands and get rid of it. It's not there anymore. And then, like us, put no more energy into that negative situation. We now have to create positive situations going forward. And the other thing, I have to make this point, and it's a very important point. The United States of America, by the year 2050, will be a brown nation. The largest minority group right now are the Hispanics. They, between they and the black population of the United States, they will take over. The white population of the United States will be at about 45 to 46 percent. They will officially be in the minority. What is being planned right now back there is for a third party. Cool. We do not need Democrats and Republicans anymore. They need another alternative. They need a progressive third party that will embrace those that are not embraced by the other two. Well, we have that here with the Greens. Yeah, but it's going to be a lot better than that. Yes, but yeah, I was just using that as a basic example. Understood. Understood. Anyway, guys. It's not over. It's not over, and but we are done with it. Well, I'm done. Good enough. Wipe, well, hands done. Let's have a break. You got it. Beyond, 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 three, 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 D, 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 D. Welcome back this week, everyone, to another edition of Beyond 3D. Indeed. 
Matt, yes. beings are visiting us from other dimensions, confirms the FBI. Good. At least they're good <laughs> for something. There's been much talk nowadays about interdimensional worlds. Yes. Especially what with the Large Hadron Collider mm-hmm. at CERN. Um, if you haven't heard anything about that before, feel free to troll the mm. internet about CERN. I um, haven't bashed on about CERN for a while. No, you haven't, actually. No, well, they really haven't uh, released anything or done anything weird. Okay. I think the weirdest thing they ever did was that ghost dance. Oh, yeah, people are talking about that. Still. Mm. Uh, no, I'm saying still as in, yes, they are still talking about that. Mm. Ghost dancing is... Tai, not, yeah, Tai Chi? Yeah. It's like a Tai Chi kata. I did see some of that. Um, I did. I remember it at the tunnel. Yeah, it's, it's just madness. It was weird. Just madness. <laughs> um, which, again, tells me they know something we don't. Mm. Uh, but yes, the FBI. So they declassified a particular lieutenant colonel who cannot be named. Mm-hmm. Declassified a report from 1947. Mm-hmm. And I will put a couple of those pages Excellent. up on the Facebook page tonight. There is some redacted information on there. So the big black texter. But if you have a, have a bit of a look and blow it up and have a little read. It's very, very interesting. Mm. There is a full PDF file of it. It's about yeah. 67 pages, but I'm not going to put it 67 pages no. up on the Facebook page. <laughs> but um, I found that this week and I thought it was very pertinent in regards to the FBI, considering everything they've been up to this week. Well, I'm surprised they had time. <laughs> um, being that that is the case, um, so now you have the FBI talking about it. The CIA is... is synonymous with the whole movement of UFOs and UAPs and keeping it as secret as possible. The U.S. Navy, in the same regard, is heavily involved in that as well. Well, according to this document, which is declassified, Mm -hmm. um, we've been visited numerous times by many different extraterrestrial beings, Yep. some of whom are not only from other planets beyond our own, but also from other dimensions, Mm. which we've talked about many, many times. Yep. Um, apparently, some of these alien beings originate from an ethereal plane coexistent within, mm-hmm. our, within our physical universe. These incredible entities that apparently can materialize on our very own planet appeared as huge translucent figures. Mm-hmm. Now, we've spoken to many people over the last two years about this. Yep. Yeah, it's, not, it's nothing shockingly new to either of us. But in this document, um, it talks about parts of the disc... Um, that carry crews. Others are under remote control. Mm-hmm. Um, the mission is peaceful. The visitors contemplate settling on this planet. Uh, I think they'll wait until a new president elected. In 2020. Uh, these visitors are human-like, but much larger in size and also much smaller in size. We're talking about a diverse range. They are not excarnate Earth people, but come from their own world and their own interdimensional world. They do not come from a planet as we use the word, but from an etheric planet which interpenetrates with our own and is not perceivable to us. Which brother... Consul Manu. ...talked about with his refracted lens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you pondering... Refla- refracted or Re- reflected? Was it concave or convex? <sighs> Well, if it's, if it's... My brain's fried this week. Okay. Uh, if it's I'm reflected, tr- it's convex. If it's refracted, it's concave. It doesn't really matter. I'm Trumpified. You're Trumpified, yeah. Well, quite frankly, um, here's the thing, and um, I think everybody can understand this. I had a master, a teacher, that would teach us how to see the energy in the air, the prana, or the life force in the air. It's really easy to do. All you have to do is know how. You have to know how, how to adjust your eyes. And once you know that your entire world changes because you can actually see the vitality, the life force that's out there. If you have a being that comes from an etheric plane, from a plane that interpenetrates, yes, this is why people can see orbs all of a sudden. This is why sometimes people can make out those angelic-like figures. It, it makes plenty of sense to me. Um, I've got a couple more points in this document to make, so some of this will make sense to you, yep. and you'll be able to elaborate on this a bit more. We'll try. Uh, the bodies of the visitors and the craft automatically materialize on entering the vibratory rate of our dense matter. Yep. The discs possess a type of radiant energy or a ray which will easily disintegrate any attacking ship. 
They re-enter the etheric at will and so simply disappear from our vision without trace. The region from which they come is not the astral plane, mm-hmm. but corresponds to the locus or talus. Hmm. Locus, L-O-K-A-S, mm-hmm. talus, T-A-L-A-S. I need mm-hmm. to have a little bit of a dig and find out what that is. Yeah. Students of esoteric matters will understand these terms. Mm-hmm. Well, as far as your first point, um, materialization. Um, what you can do for an experiment if you want to know that, and it's been done and you can probably find it on YouTube, when you send a certain vibratory frequency through sand, it can form certain pictures. Oh, definitely. That's when they put it on one of those static plates yeah. and they send a frequency th- yeah. through it and the sand forms like um, mm-hmm. snowflakes and... Type Geometric ha- shapes geometric and those kinds of things. Yeah. Shapes, yeah. So it's a, it's a form of that, but if you um, come from a plane where that can happen, if you can materialize in this plane of existence, you know how to adjust your frequency so you can interact here. It's just... Um, We are more of an antiquated form of that because when we come to this plane, we have to wait, have to do a 10 month gestation period for the body that we occupy to grow. I've just popped while you were chitty chatting. Yep. I've just popped that on the Facebook page. Cool. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent. But yeah, those are, um, it's a, it's a valid point. And this is what I think is starting to happen. Um, as more information has gotten worldwide with the, with the World Wide web, with the internet, people are doing a lot more of their own research and, um, all right. The terms that you made, what were the two terms you mentioned? Talus and locus? Yes. Okay. A loka. Um, a loka is a plane of existence. So in the old Hindu scriptures, they always talk about Buloka, Siddha Loka, all these different y- lokas. What they are are planes of existence. And the beings that dwell there are usually in an energetic form. Buloka is the Hindu term for the earth plane. So therefore it is the world of matter. Siddha Loka is the land of the perfected ones. And the land of the perfected ones, you have perfected your vibratory spiritual body you have achieved nirvana as far as the buddhas are concerned or samadhi as far as the hindus are concerned and you dwell there and you can take a physical light body form or you can stay in the form of a mist but you are aware so different planes of existence are lokas i'm i have to look up Talis, I don't know that one personally. I'm going to have I'm, to look that I'm one looking up. I'm looking it up now, and I can't find anything on it. But this is in the FBI document, so it could be an old term. It could be an old term, but this is the whole thing. If this is an FBI document, government document, once again, what is going on, in my opinion, and I think in yours, is that governments worldwide know a heck of a lot more about what is going on than they are willing to admit, and it is a control mechanism to keep the people here bound. Well, Hillary was expected to pull a Project Bluebeam stunt prior, just prior to that. She was, look, we said we weren't going to go back into this, but look, oh, they were totally... Oh, don't, don't, no, I'm sorry, I dragged look, us back yeah, there. They were totally taken off guard, otherwise it would have happened the way you said. So, something came into the, well, well, into our had... plane to interrupt that pattern. Yes. And it took the form of that orange guy. Um, the, <laughs> so that's the way that was. But now what we go back to, you mentioned the FBI, you mentioned UFOs, you mentioned other beings from other realms, you mentioned all of this in a redacted document. That means that they know with for a certainty that other worlds, other beings exist. Everybody, buy a telescope, look at the moon. You will be shocked at what you see up there. Now... Hang on, we need to have a break. I want to get back to the moon in a sec. Cool. Welcome back this week, everyone, to another edition of Beyond 3D. Indeed. Um, the moon, Matthew. Yes. You were educating me earlier about a gentleman who connected his GoPro to a telescope. Yes. And and what did he happen to see? We have in the show talked about the fact that there is, what, a Corey Good? Oh, 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 Secret Space Program. The Secret Space Program. And through his telescope and filming it on a GoPro, this gentleman has captured part of that space fleet and filmed them in Um, space. I need to put a link to that. I'll 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 put the link up on the Facebook page as well. 
Um, his name was, and it was Larson. Oh, excuse me. Can you turn my mic off? I'm about to sneeze. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll have to we'll get out of that anyway, because believe me, mine was still on, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's no problem. Oh. Um, there's Mr. Larson and his secret space program. I will bring it up, and we will put it up on the Facebook page. But suffice it to say, when you look at what he filmed, you will be amazed at the definition that he was able to get using Ooh. a telescope and a GoPro. I just realized what that ship looked like. What does it look like to you? Disney made a film yeah. back in the early 80s, mm-hmm. and they haven't remade it, and they haven't released it. It's in the Disney vault. Mm-hmm. The Black Hole. There's I a sh- saw a movie like that. I there's, saw a movie. I saw there's that. There's a ship in that film that yeah. they actually discover sitting on the edge of a black hole, mm-hmm. and this ship mm-hmm. in this video... Looks like that. Looks almost identical. Mm. Well, guys, take a, we'll put the link up. Take a look at it. What you will see is you will see... It looks like a crystal-like ship, but you can actually make out the, the different living quarters. You can make out the engines and the propulsion. There's a lot going on with it. And if you get into Corey Good's work, he will tell you um, what was going on. It's not just large, um, y- you know, aircraft carrier-like ships. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn this around just mm-hmm. so you can see what I'm talking about. Yep. That, it does. Is that not almost it, the same? Absolutely, positively, and equivocally, yes. Got to see if we can put that up on the Facebook page as well. So, once again, um, art imitating life or life imitating art. This, it, it's really, really fascinating. And then the, the beauty of it is after he started getting these recordings, mm. and he's also done recordings on the moon where he takes his GoPro and the telescope and he actually zooms in so you can actually see that there were ancient cities up there. And you can see, it looks like if, if you were down in Mayan territory or in the old Incas territory, you can see that it was a city that or a place that people dwelt or beings dwelt. You can just tell. But what happened, I digress, what happened to him oh, no, after di- he di- started... Di- digress away, Matthew. No, after not, he you started, do that every week. Just keep digressing. After he started filming these, he had a little bit of a visit. Yes. And if you look on his YouTube page... Um, you will see who visited him directly above his house. It wasn't Santa. No, and it wasn't Santa Claus. Very, very interesting. Anti-Claus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's definitely worth seeing. So, look, there is... We've said it. I will keep saying it to you. Take a look at the moon. Take a look at Mars. Take a look at Mercury. Take a look at Venus. There is life humanoid life, in my opinion, that has been spread throughout this solar system over millennia. Without a doubt. Um, Peter Maxwell Slattery. Yes. Good evening, Pete. I know Pete listens. Excellent. Um, I probably, what now, I think from memory, it was about three weeks ago was the last time I played one of Pete's videos that mm-hmm. he posted to YouTube. Um, I'm going to play another one tonight. Oh, great. Just to, look, these little videos that he compiles and he puts freely up on Facebook uh, and YouTube, they're documentations of his experiences mm. um, and his information and, and what's coming to him and all he wants to do is to share it. He, yeah. He's not looking for monet- monetary gain. Mm-hmm. He's not looking for fame. All he wants to do is just share this information with everybody and I think it's pertinent that maybe we can pass this on to you guys tonight and share it as well. Absolutely. It, it's worth it. Um, and, and you love people like that because what they're actually trying to do is they're trying to awaken as many people as they possibly can to what is actually going on. And by doing that, they are doing the service that they're supposed to be doing. So here's Pete, Matt, um, discussing his experiences with the Orions, the Greys, the Zeta Reticuli, underground bases, reptilians, and more. So hit that button there, Matt, and let's share this tonight. Beyond, 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 three, 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 D, 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 D. G'day everyone, uh, today what I wanted to go into was a bit of a time travelling aspect uh, to do with all this and my experiences. I had an experience where half my lounge room turned into this crystal cave with the yellow hand which I've spoken about before and I wrote about this in detail in Operation Starseed. Um, I think the chapter was called Messages from the Elohim if I remember correctly but 
Long story short, part of that was going into how through certain events, through the Illuminati, the military, and that there is a sort of a little fight going on between, some could call it maybe majestic, I don't even know what it goes by, uh, but just to give it a rough term, later on it more was revealed to me to do with that, but that these guys along with the Draco Reptilians, and now I know that the Archons, through certain events in time, which I believe have been avoided but still happen, they just, I asked and tried to understand this, and they said, well, you've got to be multidimensional about it, multidimensional mind, because um, I at times think very linear, and being human, you do that, but I was shown the timelines came together and this avoided, but though it's been avoided, it still happens. So, what apparently happens was that through solar events and through manipulation, um, a lot of the people on Earth um, died. Those that survived, some of them went to Orion and the Pleiades. Other parts of humanity that survived were underground and manipulations took place over a certain amount of time and eventually they too left Earth but in two sort of lots. One lot was going through the Moon, Mars and other sectors in space around here um, and at the solar system um, putting outposts and just trying to survive. The other lot went to Zeta Reticuli. Now what's funny is that through some of these technologies it was the Zeta Reticuli faction and not to say all Zeta Reticuli are the same um, but the government cloning technologies were, or the black ops, whatever you want to call it, because it even goes deeper than black ops. Black ops we know about, it's what we don't know that where all this hardcore stuff happens, but through the technologies given to this group, um, they were able to create greys. Now there was two types that, I, from my understanding, one was android and one actually, they had consciousness um, in terms of consciousness incarnate into them if you can understand that aspect so i think it may be the four to five foot tall ones they were conscious beings the around three foot tall ones um they were android type beings you know robotic type so what i've had here is that i've been shown that uh a while back two timelines coming into one and the bits and pieces from two timelines um still happen and then at the same time, now, since 2012, everything is create your own reality time. That's what time we're in now. So with that said, uh, these solar events in our timeline that we're in now, it doesn't happen. But because of the multidimensional aspect of things, it still does happen on another timeline. So that's where the beings have been saying to me, to me um, these events have been avoided but they still happen because of the multidimensional aspect. So there's nothing to fear, but now is create your own reality time and everything is up to us. It's up to us to do the work. It's up to us to make a change. So that's what I was shown. So some of these beings that are coming back, uh, are coming back, interacting with this. Um, though if we look at the time travel scenario, it's really an illusion as well, because again, everything's happening at the same time. So, Good news is it's been avoided, but it still happens. And of course we're gonna have solar events and things of that nature still happen. It's part of reality. Where we are in um, space at the moment, um, things are really energized. The whole solar system's just heating up, but though it's a little bit, it's still heating up. And this is because where we are on the energetic scale of things uh, within galactic plane, on the 26,000 year cycle, what's happening is things are affected and so from those energies, that's what is causing a lot of the tectonic plate movements, um, and, you know, manifestations, volcanoes, earthquakes, all that sort of stuff, weather, um, because of what's going on, it, it affects everything. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you, uh, that aspect. And again, you know, we, can't, we haven't got a reference for everything here. And again, I'm only talking about, you know, what I can give reference to a large amount. I will be going into the geometric light realms and the beings and vibration and the blueprint of the universe, which I've been shown on one scale um, and a lot more other things. So keep posted and cheers for watching and thank you very much. Beyond, 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 three, three. And that was Peter Maxwell Slattery there, Matt, sharing with everyone tonight his knowledge and his experiences. Now, he had an ESETI session yep. the other week, mm -hmm. and they 
for a better for a better term, they called a ship down from the sky. Yes, and filmed it. Mm-hmm. And I've seen the video footage. It is amazing. Not surprised. It's possible. This is the whole thing. Um, guys, there's just too much out there for you to be learning and doing. Um, and we're going to make sure that you start to do it. We're going to give you as much information as we possibly can every week. Because, especially in times like these, it is necessary to get out of the mundane and into the sublime and see exactly what's going on around us, around this planet, and around our solar system in general. And not just this dimension, there are many. You can't even count how many dimensions there are, in spite of what science tells you. So, we'll science, take a look science, at that. Science, science sometimes lies. Yeah. Well, we had that physicist we were talking about the other week that was on another radio station, mm-hmm. and he was just flat out giving his perception on things, which was which were false truths. From an NLP standpoint, he had his map, and yes. based upon his map, he uh-huh. could not see the larger picture. No. That's what it comes down to. No. His world. It's the ant and the horse. <laughs> you understand the story of the ant and the horse? Well, I remember that from Babylon 5. Oh, I didn't even know you knew what I was talking about. Now, in Babylon 5, it hang was... On a second, hang on a second, I put... Feet up. Feet up. In Babylon 5, which was one of my favorite science fiction series, there is a character, a Narn, by the name of Jakar. And Jakar was, in the first season of the show, uh, the sage-like character. They were a warring race, but he had a lot of wisdom. Um, and he was a member of their leading class called the Kari. And there was one episode where he had gone out in a ship into space and had seen one of the Ancient Ones. And this ship comes, basically, as we were talking before, materializes in space. He sees it, and it just blinks right out and goes on its way. And everybody was saying, what is that? What did you see out there? What was it? And he said to the person, how can I explain this to you? And he reaches over onto a flower on the space station and picks up an ant and puts the ant on the finger. And he says to the person, what do you call this? Sorry, I'm just playing space invaders. Yep. <laughs> what do you call this? And the person said, an ant. He goes, ant. And he says, and I pick this up and I put it on my finger and I'm going to put it back down here. Now, if that ant goes over to the other, another ant and says, what was that? How would he possibly explain it? Totally impossible to explain. Okay, that, that wasn't the analogy that I was talking about, but it's still a very, very good analogy. Okay, I, now you I can like do yours. It. Well, I was just talking about the ant and the horse. What about them? Well, the ant can only see so far, because it's down low, but the horse can actually see further than the ant. Well, it's the same story, then. I know that, Matthew. (laughs) Hang on a second. (laughs) Space invaders. Enough of that. This is the thing. That's the whole point. We have our own territory, our own perspective. It is very hard to go beyond that perspective unless you do work that allows you to expand. You can expand, but this is the whole thing. We, there are beings in the universe, and this is not a sci-fi show, this comes from one of my teachers. There are beings in the universe that if you were to come anywhere near them, you would be turned to ash. And it was not, and it would not be in any way malevolent. It is just the way it is. You cannot handle their energy. Spiritual teachers basically are transformers. What they do is they transfer energy. They can step energy down so that you can get it at the right frequency for you. Otherwise, you can fry. The light that burns twice as bright burns only half as long. Dr. Eldon Tyrell, Matt, Blade Runner. Mm. So, when you guys look at all this material, when you start reading these things, and I think we just have to get to the point where we can recognize the fact that there are other beings in the universe, in the solar system. There are vehicles craft that have crashed on this planet there are vehicles floating around in space all of the time those vehicles do not have to be mechanical they can actually be biological this thing we call space could be similar to the oceans that we have here on earth and within that ocean there are many kinds of creatures that are swimming floating and doing all kinds of things so when you go outside of this atmosphere in this earth into space space can be just like water and there are entities that live in between what we call space there are entities that live at the bottom of the mariana trench Mm -hmm. where it's 
so hot at the bottom because mm-hmm. of the volcanic yes. springs that come up mm-hmm. that technically the sulfur down there is so poisonous that they should not be able to live there. Right. But they thrive mm. because they are designed by evolution mm-hmm. to live where they do. Yep. We think of our existence this Yep. As terra firma. This terra firma yeah. and this bubble we live in, or some, some of you live in, <laughs> as pretty much all there is. And Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it is, guys. You just got to get used to it. Well, guys, I'll tell you what. It has been one heck of a week, and we are talking about energetically... The entire planet is drained now because everyone was concentrating on one event and now everybody needs to debrief. So we also need to rest and debrief. So we're going to call it a night for tonight. I'm, this I'm, episode. I'm absolutely buggered. Mm. And I can see I'm just looking at you across the desk in this dark room. Mm-hmm. Sunday night. Mm-hmm. Hello. Mm-hmm. You look stuffed. Everybody was up. Everybody was watching. Everybody was hoping. Everybody was praying. It was a world event. The majority of the world's heart has bled. Oh, week. big time. Bled. Big time. And every, energetically, like you say, everybody's stuffed. It seems like there are 50 million people on the North American continent that are elated, and the other six and a half a billion people on Earth are in a funk. Yeah, I don't get it. It's a weird one. I don't get it. But you're not getting off that easy tonight. No? Oh, oh, that. Well... Let's bring up the elephant in the room, Matthew. The interstellar elephant? Yes, room? the interstellar elephant. What's happened? Uh, I actually saw the file. Okay, that's a start. Yes, that's I saw the start. file. Can we try and get you to actually play the disc next week? Yes, I promise. I make a vow on this show that next week's show, I will be able to give you a brief synopsis of the movie Interstellar. And I'm only going to give you five minutes, if that, on it. So- we'll need more. I we'll know you will need more after you see it, because mm-hmm. I know what the ending is all about, and that's the bit which you will unpack the most. Cool. Looking forward to it. That's what I'm going to do this because week. Because you're, you're, you're not getting that other movie that I promised yes, you. Yes, I know. Until I know, you've I hit know, that one. I know, I know. And I also have to get to see Doctor Strange. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you now for a fact, you'll love that one just oh, as much. Oh, good. Very good. Very good. Well, guys, that's it for us this week. Thanks for listening in. We will catch you next week for another edition of Beyond 3D. And I'm going to make sure that I'm full of beans next week and energized and ready to go. And you will be too, Matthew. Cause we'll get back to We it. need to make sure we deliver a high energy show for our listeners next week because they deserve nothing less. Indeed. Take care, guys. Good night. Morning, morning, morning. Morning, morning, morning. What? Morning, Tim. Morning. Howdy. How was Washington? Great. Sweet. Yep. What? What? I'm not. I'm not shocked at all, Tim. Tim, I've, I haven't even been into makeup yet, Tim. I'm not shocked at all. I've been saying this for a month, nearly a year. Uh, the moment you think he can't do it is the moment he takes the White House. Of course, Trump fucking won. What is everyone fucking shocked about? Jesus, the media, the political elite, the pollsters, the markets, you, Ooh, a drawer on the floor. How can everyone be so fucking stupid? Hillary Clinton. What were the Democrats thinking? Hillary Clinton, don't get me wrong, I wanted Hillary to win. I'd personally vote for Lucifer over Donald Trump. Trump, the grabbing, wall building, climate change denying, health care abolishing, tax dodging, spewing demagogue. How have you got to be to lose to that? Where was Sanders? Why wasn't he on the ticket? I, I have no doubt in my mind that Sanders would have beaten Trump's Trump hands down. But instead, they chose Clinton, a candidate who's been cozying up to the banks and dry humping corporations for years, who is on record telling her corporate friends that you should have a public and a private persona. In other words, don't tell the truth to the plebs or you won't be able to rip them off. She'll do. That was the feeling. What did they think was going to happen? People keep saying to me, how did this happen? They're, they're dumbfounded, but it's so simple. The left did this. This is this is my fault. People like me. When are we going to learn? The left have given up putting any argument across at all to the point where Clinton is considered left liberal. Oh, but she's better than Trump. Sorry, that's not good enough. Clearly, clearly it's not good enough. And if if I see me one more tweet containing a containing a, a hashtag Trump wins next to a hashtag everyday sexism, I'm going to drop a 
bollock. Not everyone that voted for Trump is a sexist or a racist. Some of them are, but most aren't. Most people didn't vote for her, not because she's a woman. They didn't vote for her because she offered no palpable change whatsoever. Same old <laughs> Trump represents a change, a terrifying change, but a change nonetheless. Hillary represented, well, she represented very little, actually, because she protects corporate interests, because she doesn't call the police when questions from the debate are leaked to her in advance. I noticed we barely reported that. Not everyone that voted for Trump is a sexist or a racist. How many times does the vote not have to go our way before we realise that our argument isn't won by hurling labels and insults? Tory majority, government, uh, Brexit, uh, uh, Trump. What next? When will we learn that the key is discussion? If you are unwilling to discuss, then you are creating the conditions in which Donald Trump and people like him can thrive. But instead of persuading people to vote, she just she just courted celebrity endorsements and then lost. What's going on? It's almost as if the political acumen of Beyonce and Jay-Z count for nothing. And then she loses it and, and loses the election and she locks herself in her hotel because she's too upset or because it had never occurred to them to even write a concession speech. Either way, grow up. I have no sympathy for her whatsoever. Be a better candidate. <sighs> but I, I, thing is, I can't say that. I can't say this to any of my friends, Tim. People like me, I, I get <laughs> lynched if I said this because people like me won't listen. I, I did this. This is my fault. <laughs> Donald Trump. The left is responsible for this result because the left have now decided that any other opinion, any other way of looking at the world is unacceptable. We don't debate anymore because the left won the cultural war. So if, if you're on the right, you're a freak, you're evil, you're racist, you're stupid, you are a basket of deplorables. How do you think people are gonna vote if you talk to them like that? When has anyone ever been persuaded by being insulted or, or labelled? So now, if you're on the right or even against the prevailing view, you are attacked for raising your opinion. That's why people wait until they're in the voting booth. No one's watching anymore. There's no blame or shame or anything, and you can finally say what you really think, and that is a powerful thing. Brexit, and now Trump, and all the polls were wrong, all of them. Because when asked, people can't admit what they think. They can't admit what they think, they're not allowed to. The left don't allow them to. We have made people unable to articulate their position for fear of being shut down. They're embarrassed to say it. Every time someone on the left has said, you mustn't say that, they are contributing to this culture. It's time to stop moaning. It's time to stop crying over spilt Brexit. It's time to stop ignoring your opponents or worse, trying to silence them. It's time to stop banning people from speaking in universities. It's time to stop thinking that reposting an article on your Facebook feed is political engagement. It's time to realise that reading The Guardian doesn't make you a liberal. That retweeting Greenpeace doesn't lower your carbon footprint. And if my mansplaining is triggering you, you can either to your safe space or you can engage and debate me and tell me what I'm getting wrong. Because Trump just won the White House. Being offended doesn't work anymore. Throwing insults doesn't work anymore. The only thing that works is bothering, doing something. And all you have to do is engage in the debate. Talk to people who think differently to you and persuade them of your argument. It's so easy and the left have lost the art. Stop thinking that everyone who disagrees with you is evil or racist or sexist or stupid and talk to them. Persuade them otherwise, because if you don't, I'll tell you what you get. You get President Trump. Just because you haven't experienced it, doesn't mean it doesn't exist.